In this short video, we're going to focus on showing you the advantages of using the triggering functions on a logic analyzer, very specifically the USB with two E uh, USB devices that we have. Uh, and specifically, we need to generate signals so that we can actually fool around with the triggering. So I am actually have off screen here set up two USB devices, one as a signal generator and one as the logic analyzer. We're going to start with the signal generator. You can see here that I have a set of counter waveforms set up and that's what I'm going to generate. That's uh, pretty convenient to trigger with. And down here I have the loop button set but right now I don't have this running and no signals are being generated. I'm going to come back to that later. I want to quickly switch to the logic analyzer and take a look at what we're going to set up over here. The logic analyzer one thing I need to do is make sure that I have um, uh, megabit samples per second set high enough so that I'm catching all the signals that I have over there. Uh, this is at least 10 times faster than the signals that I'm generating, so I'm not going to miss anything. And we can set up for a number of samples that we want, and we took care of that in another video. The triggering is what we really want to focus on, and this set of blocks between the signal names and the actual signals deals with the triggering. So what you do for triggering, you're looking for a data pattern on uh, logic digital devices you look for data patterns you might be familiar with triggering on analog uh, DSO oscilloscopes there you're looking for a voltage level and if you uh, fool with that a little bit you know that the voltage level that you pick is the voltage level that the signal starts at on the left hand side of the screen what we want to do with the logic analyzer is pick a data pattern that is unique uh, in our data so that we can have that occur right at the trigger point so we know exactly what's happening with our data. So in this case, um, you just click on these blocks. We're going to set this up for looking for a specific pattern. In this case, I'm looking for the binary 1, 0, 1, 0, which is a 5. And this counter counts from 0 to 15. So what should happen when I hit this acquire? After I start my signals up, I should get a um, trigger point should fall right at the waveforms where that pattern 5 occurs. So I'm going to hit the acquire button and we're going to look at this for a second. Uh, you'll notice it says waiting for trigger. Right now it is looking for this pattern of uh, signal levels that I set up and it can't find it right now because I'm not sending the digital signals. So I'm going to jump back to the digital signal generator and I'm going to hit the generate button and I'm going to quickly jump back to our logic analyzer and you can see we weren't quite quick enough to catch it because what ended up happening was this actually acquired our data and you can see the trigger sits right here this little red line and you'll notice that right at the trigger or right after it I have a pattern of 1010 zero, zero, which is exactly the trigger that I set up to capture. Uh, to get this on the screen, I'm going to hit the acquire button again. You'll notice that it actually took a second sampling of data and once again the trigger is at 1010 zero, zero. and I can keep on doing this multiple times. It doesn't really look like anything's happening but it's acquiring a whole new set of data and starting it there at uh, 1010. If I want to convince you of that, I'm going to hit the clear button to clear all these out and set up a new pattern of 1111 in the counter. This is a unique pattern that represents a count of 15. I'm going to hit the acquire button and you'll notice now the trigger stops and the right after the trigger is 1110 which is a pattern for 15. Uh, this is a really useful function. Probably don't use a logic analyzer without uh, setting up a trigger in uh, real world applications, but it's really useful in the workbench um, when I want to know exactly where my signals start or where they finish. I want to sync them up with the signals that I generated, and this is one way to do it. 